Welcome one and all to Americans Learn. My name is Kit. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and hit that ring bell notification. That way all of you are made aware when we upload new content onto our YouTube channel. And today, 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 we have ourselves a fun video. It's time to fight for independence. No, it's not July yet. But we're talking about the war of Scottish independence. Blood of, blood of Bannockburn. War of Scottish Independence by Sabaton History, number two. That's right. I'm following through with my promise. I started with number one with the Battle of Vinza. Now we're, start, we're talking about the Blood of Bannockburn. So I'm excited for this. But as always, folks, I am going to stay consistent with this one and always say to all of you, for all the videos that we watch here for Americans Learn, the original video is in the description box below. So as a favor for me, Please support Sabaton History. All of you were very vocal in, in having us check out this YouTube channel, and I had to say there is a huge amount of information and videos that we're more than happy to share with you, our viewing audience. But, again, the right thing to do is to support the original content creators. It'll be nice. It'll be awesome. Plus, it'll help them contribute to do more content like this. So, if you don't got to get it, if you don't get it, go figure it out. But without further ado, since I'm in charge of the ones and the twos, let's get ready to check out this video, Blood of Bannockburn, War of Scottish Independence by Sabaton History. Let's get our learn on, shall we? And let's get ready to play this video in a three, a two, a one. I'm Indy Nidell. And I'm Joachim from Sabaton. And this is Sabaton History. The song Blood of Bannockburn is about the battle of the same name and Robert the Bruce, the man who led the Scots to victory there. The Scots fought for their independence from the English for over 30 years before achieving final victory. Wow. And a major step on that road to victory was the Battle of Bannockburn. And our song Blood of Bannockburn is our only song in a major key. Wow. Joachim is going to tell you a bit about the song itself, but first, I'm going to tell you the history. Now, the Scottish defeat in the Battle of Falkirk in 1289 at the hands of the English had seemingly destroyed the Scottish independence movement once and for all. William Wallace, the guy from Braveheart. <laughs> That's a great film, uh, but um, some of the battles are not truly historically accurate, but nonetheless... Great film, through and through. But uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's not how William Wallace really looked like. Had abandoned his title as the Guardian of Scotland, embittered by the Scottish nobles who had betrayed him during the battle. On the run, he was again betrayed and handed over to the English, who emasculated, strangled, and ah. quartered him in 1305. The Scottish earls surrendered and swore their fealty to Edward I of England, the one they called Longshanks. But there was still a strong anti-English feeling throughout the country, with nobles still plotting an insurgency. Such a noble was Robert Bruce, also known as The Bruce. He was the formal Earl of Carrick and the seventh Lord of Annandale, and had a strong claim to the Scottish throne, but also many enemies among his fellow Scots. See... I've o I was always a little bit more curious about Robert the Bruce. Now, obviously, I think this video is going to kind of give us a short summary. But if any of you know any videos that we should check out, because let's face it, the History Channel doesn't do history anymore. Um, but I know there's a lot of great YouTube channels um, that do cover history and the background to Robert the Bruce, uh, if there is any. And if there's something that you would like to uh, us to check out, uh, your feedback would be so important. So, uh, yeah, because, uh, again, uh, the character in the film is interesting, but I always felt like there was a little bit more. Your thoughts. Type it in the comment section below. In 1306, Bruce made his move and secured the throne and once crowned King of Scotland, rallied the Scottish earls for war with England. With high hopes, he led his forces into the field and got his army wrecked during the Battle of Methven. In fact, Bruce barely escaped with a small band of loyal followers, his army gone, his lands confiscated and distributed amongst his Scottish enemies. Even his wife, sisters, and daughters were captured and imprisoned, his brother tortured and executed. But from his darkest hour, 
emerged one of the greatest comebacks in history. Robert Bruce returned from his hiding place in the Western Isles, where he recruited new warriors to his cause and began a relentless guerrilla war against his enemies, raiding English camps or ambushing their supply lines. They hid among the locals, who also hated the English oppressors. Robert Bruce became a tactician, finding the weak points of his enemies and using the terrain to his advantage. He took back his castles and gathered ever more supporters to his cause. Yo. One by one, he destroyed his internal enemies on the battlefields, took their strongholds, making him an actual king of Scotland once again. Of course, this war did not escape the attention of the English throne. Now, Longshanks had died by this time and his son Edward II was king. But until 1314, he was distracted by his own internal enemies and his affairs in France. But the new king in the north was a serious threat to England's frontier. So Edward assembled an army of over 18,000 men, among them heavy cavalry and Welsh longbowmen, and led them to crush the Scottish rebellion once again. A side note here. The longbow was a recent and major innovation that revolutionized medieval warfare. Welsh bowmen had used them against Longshanks, actually, and he incorporated them into his army. The longbow was a devastating weapon, with long range, able to pierce even plate armor from shorter ranges, and with a much quicker rate of fire than the crossbow. They would later famously be used to destroy the French in battle after battle during the Hundred Years' War. Contrary to popular opinion, though, Longbowmen did not launch arrows high in the sky to drop onto their enemies. Okay, while this did happen, they fought far more often at close range in order to be their most accurate and to preserve their store of expensive and limited ammunition. Anyhow, at this time, Bruce had Stirling Castle, the old residence of Scottish kings, under siege. It not only had strong symbolic significance, the position of the castle between the streams Bannockburn and the River Forth was also of strategic importance. Philip de Mowbray, the castle governor, was loyal to the English crown. The legend goes that he said he would surrender the castle to Bruce if the English did not relieve him by the end of June. Well, on June 23rd, the English army, led personally by Edward II, arrived outside of the village of Bannockburn on the other side of the street. Robert Bruce was now determined to fight a decisive battle. His army was probably around eight to 10,000 men strong and consisted mostly of infantry, some crossbowmen, and a few cavalrymen. He was outnumbered at least two to one. Historians wow. disagree on how much of the English army had arrived by the battle. So Bruce would have to rely on his tactical experience he had gained during his guerrilla campaign. The story of the Battle of Bannockburn goes that the vanguard of the English army crossed the stream and encountered Robert Bruce and his bodyguard. The Scots had made defensive earthworks that formed a bottleneck on the road to and through the woods, so the English could only launch a narrow frontal attack here. These earthworks also neutralized the English advantage in heavy cavalry. The English nobleman Henry de Bohun, whose father was joint commander of the vanguard, spotted the Bruce and charged him with a lance. The Bruce turned at the last moment and won the duel with a superior battle axe in the face. Yo! Ah! Well, that is a superior tactic, by the way. Too right. The Scots then routed the vanguard infantry. Now, Bannockburn is not a large river by any means, but it is lined with swamps, marshland, and dense woods, through which the armored English had to struggle. The Scots on the other side were hidden in the woods. When the English attempted to cross the stream, the Scottish infantry would advance as well in tightly packed formations known as shieldtrons or shieldtrons. They carried spears and pikes, and as long as they maintained formation, the English heavy cavalry, also limited by space from getting up speed, could not hope to charge them and live through it, nor could they outflank them as night fell. The English camped in a deep marsh and remained awake for the most part, fearing an ambush that never came. The following day, 
June the 24th, Edward II drove the rest of his army across the stream. Bruce moved his whole force out of the woods in three formations. The wow. English now realized that the field was too small for them to fully deploy. So the archers, who would normally have been on the flanks, were now placed in the front rank. They opened fire as the Scottish advanced. Bruce ordered his cavalry to charge them, which prompted Edward to order a counter charge with his own cavalry, which blocked any possible storm of arrows. The Scottish formations did not break, and the Yo. English charge went horribly wrong. The Scots infantry advanced, pushing their enemy back into the steep banked ditch of the Bannock Burn, where the English soldiers were trapped by the weight of their armor and slaughtered. Okay, so uh, already about Robert the Bruce. Um, geez, I wish they portrayed that character in the Mel Brooks movie, but obviously it was about William Wallace. But I don't know. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, maybe a movie about Robert the Bruce done properly. Or maybe a TV series done properly. Nothing done by Netflix, please. No, Netflix, stay away. You screw up at history. Go away, Netflix. <laughs> but no, that would that would be really good to see. Edward's bodyguards. Bear a, a, a proper story about Robert the Bruce, to be more precise. Barely got their lord away from the fray, and many famous English knights fell prey to Scottish pikes or were captured for ransom. Seeing their king flee the battle, the rest of the English army turned their backs and ran as well. Stirling Castle surrendered, and much of the fleeing army was killed making its way back to the English border, either by Bruce's pursuing army or by the local inhabitants. It is estimated that the English lost over 10,000 men, perhaps wow. many more. And the financial strain of the ransom of over 150 nobles weakened Edward's rule. The battle destroyed England's ability to fight the Scottish for years, leaving Northern England vulnerable. Robert was really the Bruce at this point, as his name became legend and his authority after the battle was unchallenged. This was the main turning point on the road to Scottish independence, which was signed by treaty with King Edward III, Edward II's son and successor, after Robert the Bruce invaded Northern England in 1328. Wow. Well, not only does this song feature bagpipe, but we also got some Hammond organ in this one. And it was, in fact, you that played the organ on this. Yes, it was. Uh, actually, I came into the band as an organ player. and uh, or <laughs> That's them young. <laughs> That's some good stuff right there. Or I started in music as an organ player. Yeah, I so. bet a lot of people don't actually know that that's, that's what you did when you first joined Sabaton. Yeah, I was writing songs and they told me, you know, can't you sing until we find a singer? And the lazy bastards, well, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> so, so would you like, were you like singing on demos and they'd send, say, and we'd send these around and somebody can maybe, you know, take over? Yeah, stuff. actually, that's what happened. They, uh, the lazy bastards, as I call them, and I will refer to them as that for this one. Uh, they actually told me, you know, one day, oh, we're going to record a demo. And I went, well, we don't have a singer. And they said, well, we'll use the demo to find a singer. And that actually made sense. And so you were just doing like a placeholder vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Okay, it's something. It sounded like shit. Now, yeah, we, do we get to hear it one day? I hope not. <laughs> I certainly hope okay, not. Okay, so that means I'm probably not cutting to it right now. Oh, no, no please no. don't. Okay, not cutting okay. to it right now. Um, but that's really interesting. Uh, and you know, I play keyboards as well and stuff. And yes. we both played with, you know, different Swedish bands and different, different, uh, touring around Sweden. It's been a lot of fun. We were touring. At wow, I, I, I did not know uh, our historian here played in a band too. Hey, we, we, we all have interesting backstories. Basically, we started touring Sweden at the same time. Yeah, we did. I mean, you guys started playing in the uh, 99 or what? Yeah. And the, the first Swedish bands I started really touring around Sweden with was also in 99 and 2000. Oh, yeah. Now, back to the song, though, because this is about <laughs> Blood of Bannockburn. Um, one thing about this song is you can't help but feel it's a sort of an inspirational song, you know, when you... Yeah, I mean, it is in a major key, as yeah. I said, okay. and uh, it's such a good vibe live, seriously. I mean, it was kind of popular on the album, yeah. but live, that song really comes to life in a way. Uh, people are happy, and especially playing this one, 
in Scotland. Yeah, I was that is say. a blast. We've done that in Scottish war paint and everything and kilts. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, do we have a photo? Uh, maybe we do actually. Boom. <laughs> That's absolutely glorious. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> That's some good pole dancing. All right, Blood of Bannockburn, this uplifting song in a major key, is on the album The Last Stand. And that's all for today. But we'll see you next time on Sabaton History. All right, soldiers, you know the drill. You subscribe to the YouTube channels. It's Sabaton right. History, regular Sabaton channel, right. World War II, and Time Ghost. You click that playlist, find more cool videos, and then you support us on Patreon. That's what makes this shit happen, okay? Now on the ground and give me 20! As we should. All right, uh, first of all, <clears throat> even though it was only 12 minutes long, that was more information I learned about Robert the Bruce than I think any other media has ever said about him. Now, uh, you guys and gals in our viewing audience, again, were very vocal in saying that, hey, Americans learn. Check out Sabaton History YouTube channel, and we have. Uh, but if there is any kind of videos or documentary series that we should check out about Robert the Bruce or the War of Scottish Independence, well, then type it in the comment section below. The only way we're going to get to it or check out something um, is because of you, our viewing audience. So I never knew this uh, detailed uh, information about the Battle of Bannockburn. Um, Clearly, it's the turning point for Scottish independence and is what made Robert the Bruce the king of Scotland. So um, that's some fascinating stuff right there. I really can't thank you guys enough. And yes, I am still going to keep true to my promise starting from beginning to end. This is number two. We'll uh, be going to three, four, all the way down to the end. So uh, the only way you're going to see us check out these videos on Americans Learn is by being sure that you double check and triple check that you still like, comment, share, and subscribe and hit that ring bell notification so you're made aware we upload new content onto our YouTube channel. But also, big favor for me, and I would appreciate it if all of you would also please support the original content creators. The original link to this video is in the description box below. We do that for all of our videos on our YouTube channel. So come on, show some love to Sabaton History's YouTube channel. Give them a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Now go ahead and do 20 more push-ups and drink water. <laughs>